Hey everybody, how the hell is it going? Uh, back here at Spectre Sound, got a little Monday morning tutorial for you guys. Hopefully something interesting to watch instead of doing your normal bullshit you normally do on Mondays, which is probably either go to school or work. So unlike school, I am going to teach you something worthwhile. Now, on my travels to California, um, I made a trip out to Vegas to hang out with the guys from Witherfall and do, do a couple of cool things. And I stopped by to see my very good friend, Jason Constantine, um, who I've known for a very long time. He's uh, one of the guys uh, who was very active on the Sneep Forum about 10 years ago. And uh, he's mixing some bands and whatnot. And one of the bands he was mixing was a project for a guy named Jeff Duncan, who's one of the guitar players in Armored Saint, a band I'm a huge fan of and have been for at least 30 years, maybe longer. We were checking out this mix on Jeff's new record and I'm like, wow, this drum sounds pretty fucking good. You must be using samples. And he's like, nope, no samples. And I'm like, well, they sound fucking huge. And he's like, yes. And the original tracks really weren't that good. And I'm like, well, how the hell did you manage that? And he showed me this neat little trick. Now, this is basically how to add a drum room to a recording where you don't necessarily have a drum room or a small room. Anyway, so this is going to make your small drum room sound much larger, and it's a really cool trick. So just kind of bear with me through here, and I'm going to walk you guys through it. So now here's my typical drum mix, and I've got Cam Fleury on the drums right now, and he's... Um, He's just playing, he's just laying down a groove because we're going to be doing something cool with that GOC eight string guitar in a couple months. So anyway, we've got this really cool savage groove going on. Nothing spectacularly difficult, but this is a great way to demonstrate the principle. Now that's my typical drum sound. Nothing wrong with that at all. You know, Cam's laying it down. It's it's a pretty cool groove. Nice cracky snare. That's the old Ludwig Superphonic, of course. Um, if we want to take a look here, hang on, make sure I got the right button hit. Ooh, that's my new zoom feature. Hey, how cool is that? And I'm just gonna move down here. Yep. So we've got a couple of things going on. We got a couple different kick sounds. You know, sub kick, distressor snare. I can probably pull that back, give it a bit more headroom. Make sure we're not going into the reds there. And that's going to a drum reverb. That's cool. Yeah, here's my room mic. Yeah. My room mics, so to speak. And it's not a very big drum room. I think it's 10 feet by maybe 11 feet by eight, nine feet or something like that. It's not a big drum room at all, so we're not going to get big drum sounds. But check this out. So here's here's the trick. We shut off the verb here. Here's just the, here's just, you know. Now watch this. Now the cool thing about this is this is completely tweakable. Um, here's, here's one of my favorite programs I use is uh, Stillwell Verbiage. And this, this is pretty badass. And you can, you can just tweak, tweak this out and it's just a nice crisp sounding drum reverb. We can turn, you know, bring down the room size, just brings, makes the drum room that much smaller, or we can, you know, go obscene with it. It really doesn't matter. Ah, but it's got a dry signal here. We need to get rid of that. Let's take that out. Okay, that's a little much there. That's looking all right. And we can just bring in how much of this we want. That's the original reverb. And that's the uh, that's the simulated drum room. So what's going on here? Yeah, we could. Let's bring that down just a touch more. Bring back the room size a touch. Now, 
don't get, don't get me wrong. You can use other types of reverbs on this as well. Because Jason was originally using this with um, a room simulator, and it was pretty sick. And yeah, I got to say, pretty neat stuff. Let's go sample acoustics. Let's pull that back a bit so it looks a little nicer. There we go. That's good. Let's go recording studios. I think we're messing with East West or West Lake. That was it. Yeah, let's go. Let's go into West Lake here. Um, okay. Drum position. We're, we're full wet. So you can really change the overall tone of the drums here. Okay, uh, let's try one different one. Let's hear Medium Hall, uh, San Francisco, something or other here. Let's try that center, impulse response and respect, and let's check it out. Wow. Okay, that's kind of a lengthy reverb. I kind of like the the air on that. Let's see if we can zoom in on here and see if we can change up the uh, the overall length of this. I think we can do that with this reverb time. Yeah, let's take that RT60 is uh, 1.5 seconds. Let's pull that back to take that down to about 600 600 milliseconds. Let's see what we get. I like that a lot. Let's go. Let's check this out right here. Okay, that's pretty cool. So, okay, I get it. What, what gives, Glenn? You've shown us two reverbs. Big deal. What? What? What's the big secret? What? What's? What's making it work? What's making this work different than the reverb I was already using? We're gonna just zoom in here. And what I've got are sends going to my close mic track here. If I if I center this up. Basically it's sending the snare drum and the tom mics. That's it, to this one track. That's right here, close mics. And let me see if I can get this right. There we go. So we got close mics here, close mic, close mic, close mic. And all I've got this done is set to go post fader. So that means it gets sent to that track at this level. And that that means post the post effects too. When you go post fader, all the effects are in place. So that's what you want. You want all the affected tracks to go to this track. This, this track. And the great thing is we can control the amount of whatever is being sent there just by moving these faders here. Let me pull that back. And that gives us toms as well. Now, I don't want a lot of kick mic in my sound. I don't even want a lot of uh, hi hat. So that's why we've got Fab Filter Pro going on here. Why is that? That Fab Filter should go first. There we go. Look at that. If you guys don't know what Fab Filter is, I highly recommend checking out. It's a, it's like a it's kind of like a dynamic gate kind of um, EQ kind of thing. Really works wonders on this sort of thing. Anyway. Yeah, that really cleans things up. So we got that going there. We got the Tom mics going. At least we had the Tom mics going. So we've got Tom mics going to that track as well. Great. So what we want to do here is we're going to throw the effects on. Let me zoom in here. So let's see what's going on here. These all the effects I got. Okay. First up, I got the SSL EQ going on here. Not much going on here. Just a little bit of a low end roll off. I just want to keep the kick boom out because I just find a lot of kick reverb can be kind of, you know, annoying and just kind of cloudy and whatnot. So we're going to, we're going to roll this off right about up to 90 Hertz, something like that. I think that was where that was, if I can read that correctly. 
see if I pull that back a bit, see if we can see that a bit better. Okay, so we got about 90 hertz roll off there. Nothing, nothing major yet. Next up, we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna throw that IR1 on. Now let's put verbiage back on. It's got a bit of a wider sound going on. It's pretty neat. Okay, and as for right now, it's pretty much the same as the drum reverb I had going. A little bit thumpier. That's about it. This, my friends, is the key right here. This is the DBX 160 compressor, and this thing's legendary, and Waves has a really great version of it. And that's what we want. Basically, what it's doing is it's just adding a shit ton of compression that's easy, that doesn't pump very hard, and you can get fairly aggressive with it without it, you know, the the, the volume level going all over the place. So you, you can have some fun with this thing. Now, if you take a look, we've got about 6, 7, and 1 on here, ratio. Uh, threshold's back pretty pretty easy, and we've got a lot of gain thrown on, because if we throw, throw a lot of compression on this, it's just... Actually, that's pretty sick. Okay, yeah, the ratio doesn't do too, too much here. Output gain, I'm kind of bouncing between the output gain here and just the fader. Just remember, we're turning down a lot here. That's pretty sick right there, actually. I'm kind of really digging that. Let's listen to that in the mix. Might be a little much. Now, the thing is, because we're compressing so hard, it's bringing more of the kick. It's kind of dropping the snare a little bit, so, you know, that the kick bleed into the into the snare mic is getting picked up quite a bit. So we got to be careful here, just how much we throw in. That's pretty neat. Let's try that. Now that's the thing. Those uh, toms might be sounding a little bit too beefy there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pull that send level down a little bit. Let's check that. Let's check uh, one of those fills again. Right about here. And if we if we try that just with the regular style reverb. Yeah, it's okay with the regular style reverb, but yeah, this uh, this compressing the reverb idea really has, you know, something to it. So because of these faders, now the other thing we can try here is because we're going to get a bit of kick bleed here. Let's just try a straight up gate. Yeah, let's just see if we can get the, get the kick right out of that.
Now, the big trade-off here is we're going to lose a bit of the ghost notes on there. Hopefully, we can pick that up with uh, some of the room mics and that sort of thing. Let's see how this sounds. But yeah, that, that, kick, that, that kick bleed is just gone now. Now, we might actually want to put the kick drum into this close mic thing. Wow. Wait, let's pick, put the uh, kick on the close mics. Doesn't need a lot. We put that up. That's a little much. I'm really digging that. Now the cool thing is the, the room mics are still picking up a bit of that ghosting. So that's pretty cool. Now, if I had a trigger on the snare, I could probably uh, side chain the gate to pick up some of those ghost notes. But for right now, just to kind of demonstrate this purpose, I think we got something really cool. And we go back against the original drum reverb. And again, just change out to a real to a room sim. Okay, pretty damn cool. I'm really enjoying that, to be honest with you. Um, so there you go. Just a real neat trick. How to get a great big room sound out of your drums if you have a very small drum room. Hope you found this video useful, and I'll see you guys Wednesday. Till then, uh, hey, if you want to support the channel, join my Patreon and uh, spend a buck and give a fuck because um, we got some cool stuff coming up for the patrons this month and uh, you might want to get involved. Anyway, check it out at uh, patreon.com slash SMG. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Take it easy. Hey guys, if you like the video, be sure to subscribe as I post every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. If you want to learn more about recording, check out one of my tutorials or one of my gear reviews if you want the actual honest truth about a piece of equipment. Till next time, stay metal, my friends.